Hey, all you savvy Amazon sellers out there. Today, we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step full update template flat file upload. All right, I know that's a mouthful, and we really don't have a video showing step-by-step -step this process. Um, my name is Jason Master Mateo with my Amazon guy. This, this is needed a lot of times when... Uh, you've ticketed Amazon, maybe your title's not changing, or you're doing a brand name change, or what have you, or your bullets aren't sticking. And finally, brand register or seller support, they come back with the old, we need you to delete this for 24 hours and do a full update or an update, the template flat file. Uh, we call this a delete and relist, or delete and full update. And we do it a lot here because um, it's effective. It works most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't work and you have to repeat the process, but we're going to do that here today, today together. We're going to use that um, parentage test tumbler that we made with the step-by-step -step last time. So let's get going. All right. So here's our little test parent that we made last time. And um, I want to change the title. I tried changing it. It's in the back end. It's just not reflecting the PDP. Ticket Amazon. They tell me I have to delete and relist. Oh, no. All right. Now I'm scared, right? Don't be scared. Common process. Um, and we're going to get through it together. First thing you're going to need is your category listings report. So to get that, we're going to go into our uh, console here and then go to reports inventory reports and right here we're going to look for the category listings report if this isn't here sometimes it's not all you have to do is open a support ticket we'll do it real quick um open a support ticket to help and scroll down click get support selling on amazon just say please enable the category listings report click continue click my issue is not listed click account related continue i don't have an identifier continue and email send and it usually takes them a couple you know maybe 15 20 minutes usually but and then it will pop up it will tell you that the category listings report is now available it should be available on all accounts but i have uh, heard some feedback that uh, some people do not have it uh, enabled yet. So once we have our category listings report, again, we're going to go to um, enabled. Sorry. Uh, we're going to go to reports. We're going to go to inventory reports. And we're going to click this little thing here. It says category listings report. And we're going to click request report. I had already requested one earlier. So we're just going to download that. And it will look like this as soon as Excel opens. There we go. Oh, wow. What a bunch of stuff, right? Well, we're only fixing um, two children and a parent. We don't need all this stuff. So uh, what I did was uh, search find and found our three SKUs. Um, and it took a while because there's a lot of products in here. So I cleaned up the uh, file already. But I basically deleted everything that we're not working on. So um, maybe somebody that's more technical like Excel. Uh, has a better way to do this, but this is what I did, um, except for the three SKUs we'll be working on. And it turned into this. Here's the three SKUs. So once you have your three SKUs and you've deleted everything else, this is going to be the file that you're going to be working in. You can actually work in the CLR that was um, that was downloaded. So on a full update, the difference between a partial update is we have to make sure all of the information is in here. Um, it will override oftentimes even deleting pictures if you don't put the image link in there. So we want to make sure every column is filled out here for our product that is relevant. Now, the cool thing about the CLR is mo <clears throat> most of it is going to be already in here, which is nice, right? As long as you uh, had it in the back end before, it should be in here. But there are some things missing and some things that we need to change. Um, so you'll have your CLR, your category listings report, 
And a lot of this is already going to be filled out for you. So that's the cool thing about uh, working this way. One thing we need to change here is the product ID. Remember, if the ASIN exists on Amazon and you're doing flat file uh, work, always use the ASIN. Don't use the UPC or the G10 or the EAN or anything like that. It causes issues and um, it's just better to use ASIN. So we're gonna switch all these to ASIN. You'll notice the parent does not have the ASIN there. So we wanna make sure we put that in as well. And we're gonna delete these numbers and we're gonna find the ASINs. So let's go to our little thing here and go to inventory, manage all inventory and find your product. Here's our little test parent. And here's our, whoop, oh, hold on one second. There we go. Here's our parent ASIN. Let's pop that in there. Parents at the bottom. There we go. Here's our blue tumbler. And we're going to pop that where the blue tumbler is. And here's our white tumbler. Pop that in. And we can go back to our full screen on our file. Item type keyword is already there. It's correct. It should be on yours as well. If it's not there, um, it's uh, it's going to be in your um, back end here um, on your product. So item type keyword. Is under product identity. And you'll see it right here under item type keyword tumblers. You pop that in there if it's not there. Our color is correct, blue, white, good. Department, not applicable here for this particular product. You'll see a bunch of stuff in here that's not applicable to your product. Fabric type, like uh, for this example, right? Uh, one thing here on the CLR, it put a price on our parent. We don't have price on our parent, so just uh, go ahead and um, delete that. Parent is not a physical product. It is not for sale. Same with quantity, we can delete that. Now, uh, main image URL, right? I said, we have to make sure that our, your, our images are put in a full update as well, because um, oftentimes they will um, get deleted in a full update. So uh, let's go to our browser. And I use a site called uh, imgur.com. You can make a free account and add your images uh, here. Um, and here's our blue and our white. So what we're gonna do here is just click on the blue, get the direct link to the image and go back to our file and go back to our file. Something's wrong, there we go. And put the blue, which I believe was at the top. Yeah, blue's at the top. I'm gonna put the blue URL there. And we're gonna put the we don't want the uh, actual, there we go. I don't want it to be a link. I don't know why I did that, but let's go back to Imgur and get the white one. And the white one is right here. Get the direct link and copy that in. And do that, there we go. Okay, let's continue down the line here. So we've got target gender, age range, um, description, and let me uh, cough real quick. Excuse me. All right, we don't need any of this. This is all apparel stuff. Let's continue to scroll. I don't know why my scroll is not working. There we go. And we'll have our style number there. I just used the SKU as the style number. Um, size, size is 30 ounce. Again, category listing report did a lot of the work for us. All we're doing is double checking and making sure there's no missing information. Uh, CPSIA warning, uh, not applicable, et cetera, et cetera. The manufacturer, the unit count, the number of items is product expirable you might have an expirable product make sure that this is filled out yes um with that information but it should already be there on this uh category listings report 
Continue to go down your product description, your part number, if applicable, your key product features, these are your bullet points. Now again, full update, if you leave this blank, these are gonna get wiped out. So you wanna make sure that all of your bullet points are filled in. Um, I don't have bullet points, this is a test product. So I'm just gonna make sure that we have all of this filled in. One, two, three, four, five, too many. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Let's continue on. Included components, key product features, et cetera, et cetera. And whoa, okay. And there we go. Country of origin. Contains liquid or not? Nope. Do, 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 do. And make sure your height uh, and weight and all that stuff is here. Model name, item type name, tumbler, um, plastic type, material type, see all this stuff. And again, <laughs> most of this is going to be filled out from your original um, upload. So this is why full updates are not as scary as they seem. And there we go. I'm still in the call there. Whoa. All right. Here's your other image URLs. This is where you're going to put your secondary images, your swatch image for your parentage, your parentage, um, uh, what's it called, variation theme and all that stuff right here. And this is all correct. Again, the CLR did all the work for us. And here's the dreaded change. We're going to go to update, update, update. Continue on your search terms. Those will get wiped out if you don't put them in there. Make sure your search terms are in there. Again, I didn't have any search terms in here. Um, I'm just gonna put cup <laughs> so we can move on here. Make sure you have your search terms in there. All right, style theme, Do 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 do. All this stuff we don't need. Ha, that's a funny one. Look at that. There's like golf information in here. Shaft style. <laughs> Hand orientation. Lens material. Lots of stuff you don't need. Power source is assembly required. Continue on, continue on, continue on. All this stuff that we don't need. <laughs> and then here's your um, item display weight. Uh, make sure that's all in there capacity, your item height, you need to measure it, all that stuff. And very important at the end there for your fulfillment center ID, as we talked last time, these are both fulfilled by merchant, so you're gonna put default, but um, if they are FBA, make sure that they're Amazon NA. So it's not that scary, right? Look at this, everything's all filled out for you. All we had to do was change a couple things, add our image, our, our image links, and change these to ASIN. And now we're ready for a full update. And we just pulled this all from the category listings report. So we're gonna save. And we're gonna go back to our, um, I don't know what's going on with my, <laughs> let's see here, what is going on here? Okay, I fixed the little computer issue. Continuing on here, share my screen. And here we are, we saved our file. And uh, now's the time where, you know, seller support said, hey, you need to delete this for 24 hours and then do a full update. So this is where a lot of people get scared. They're like, oh, if I delete my product, I'm gonna lose my reviews and all that stuff. No, the, the ASIN is forever. All you're doing is f fixing some sort of data problem uh, with Amazon's catalog. Um, Yes, you're going they're going to be gone for 24 hours so you're going to lose out on sales. Your, you know, your BSR is going to get affected for sure. It's not online for 24 hours. But um if it's an important update that this is required for, then you know, you're going to have to do it. Um so the reason we have to delete for 24 hours is uh you'll get an error on your SKUs for uh trying to re-upload them on a full update. 
uh, oftentimes before that. And that's why Seller Central requests. So we're going to delete. So here we go. Delete. We're going to select the three here. Going to go up to the top and click delete products and listing. Oh, no. Oh, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Oh, are you really sure? Yeah, I'm really sure. Yes. Okay. Oh, we did it. Okay. Now we have to wait 24 hours. So what should we do? Well, it's Saturday. So I think I'm going to go get my car washed. But once the 24 hours are complete, we're going to go to our inventory, our catalog, excuse me, add products via upload. And we're going to click upload your spreadsheet. We're going to drop our CLR file that we made into here. If there's any egregious errors, they will show up right here. Uh-oh. Fields with invalid valid values or formatting, material type, color map, relationship type, variation theme, product care instructions. What? Oh, no. Six errors. Um, nah. Should be fine. You can um, upload files with errors. Um, there's warnings and there's errors. And I'll show you what a, uh, uh, we don't want to upload this one right now, but we'll go to our upload statuses. We'll find one that had an error. This one from this morning, I think it's the same one when I was testing this. And when you click that download processing report, you'll get this feed processing summary. And you'll see all these crazy errors and stuff. This one is the one that was telling me the parent had a had a price. Remember, we changed it to nothing. But this file still went through. See a carrot count of errors and warnings. Number of records process is what you want to look at. Flat files will process and um, go through um, with all, any number of errors a lot of times. The ones that really uh, push you back are the dreaded, you know, um, UPC GS1 errors. If you had bought your UPCs on eBay or something like that years ago and they're not um, registered to your brand through GS1, seeing that a lot now. So we're getting a lot of UPC to GS1 changes. But um, again, this, this file that we created, we pulled exactly from um, the CLR. And we just changed a few things here. This will upload fine in 24 hours. So that is how you do a delete and full update the easy way. There are some people that create the raw file over again instead of using the CLR. But we know that the CLR, we can use it. Um, so there it is. <laughs> I hope this video helps everyone out. And have a wonderful day.